Luke, yeah. we're here in Los Angeles. You're homeless. Tell me about it. Um, well, there's a lot to tell. Um, Los Angeles is a very, very crazy place. Um, I came here with my wife. Um, fam her family said, come on. Um, we got on a uh, Greyhound bus. We came, we're on our way. We started calling the first day. We left and no answer. We figured just a fluke. Uh, called the second day, no answer. And from then on, no answer. We haven't spoken to them since. You come here and you, you, you come here and you get stuck. And if you got nowhere to go and no real family to bail you out, which me and my wife don't have, you kind of are forced to go to Skid Row. Uh, Skid, Skid Row is by the bus station. It's, it's where all the shelters are. It's where all the food is. It's where all the resources are uh, located. But Skid Row is a very nasty place. Um, it, it, a, yeah, go it, on. It, it will make it so you are constantly just worried about what you need to survive because everything's being taken from you. You're being taxed for living on certain streets. You have to pay. Um, basically, drugs run most of Los Angeles itself, but especially Skid Row. Um, Skid Row um, hurt me in, in, in ways that I can't ever explain. It, it made me do things, it made me see things that I wish I never would have seen. Um, it's amazing what people can do to other people. Um, You're gonna have to, I can't hear you with the tra traffic. It's amazing what people can do to other people. Um, I especially feel bad for the females here. They get used up in, in, in a whole different way. Um, my wife experienced that. Um, but ultimately, I've seen some great acts of kindness here. Um, I've seen some great things. The problem is you get trapped here. And people say, I panhandle for money. People say, get a job. Okay, well, if I had somewhere to rest my head where my stuff wasn't stolen, where I didn't have to worry about blankets, where I didn't have to worry about food, um, I might be able to get a job. But then also, I've been seen through this entire town now, and now I'm known as homeless. So to get a job, I have to leave the area. Um, I have nowhere to get a shower daily. I have nowhere to keep work closed. Um, it's not as easy as get a job, you know? Um, and you don't get much sleep. No, right. Because you're in survival mode, and the other night I met somebody, and it's, she is a stone while I was sleeping. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, well, that's a very funny uh, thing. Your shoes get stolen a lot while you're here. Um, <laughs> And who steals a homeless man's shoes? Your shoes can be completely worthless and someone still takes them. And that's a really hard thing because you wake up in the morning and you've got no shoes. Now you got to walk around where people throw broken glass, um, people piss on the, on the ground, cockroaches, um, and you got to look for shoes. And that's, that's very disheartening. It, that's one of the strangest things I've come across here. I've had shoes that are completely worthless and stink so bad it's unreal and someone still takes them. Um, but it's also sharpened me. I don't miss a beat. There isn't too much. I'm, I'm pretty in tune with everything and everyone around me. Um, I'm a lot more aware than they are, I, I, I assume. Um, People I've, who have spent time on the streets are very aware of their surroundings. You have to be. You have to be, because if not, your surroundings will get you. You know, especially on Skid Row. You know, I don't go there at all anymore. Um, I, I broke from Skid Row about six months ago, and I haven't been there for a single thing. I broke from there for a reason somebody started trying to tax us. Um, just on panhandling, bringing money back. They wanted us to give them a percentage. And then they started doubling it, and doubling it, doubling it, until the number got so astronomical that there's no way anybody could ever pay it. And it's extorted, they're, they're threatening. Yeah. They're threatening yeah. violence or whatever, right. Right. if you don't pay the tax. They'll burn your tent on, you know. I've had 13 whole tents stolen. I, I just got jumped the other day. I've been jumped 13 times. Um, 10 of which I don't know the person, or the person is completely, absolutely insane, and I still don't know them. And, or I've never even seen the person who hits me because they're robbing me in an alley. You know, and it's, it's just, it's been hard, you know, but you survive. You find things like God, you find things like yourself, you find what you're made of, you know. Um, you can't break me, you can't break my, 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 my faith. Is um, anybody helping you? Yeah, not really, not really, really. Um, people throw me some money here and there, some food here and there, socks, as you did. Um, but things are so expensive here as well, like a hot dog behind me, $7. Yeah. You know how long it takes me to sit down and make $7? You know? Um, everything down here is a lot more expensive too, yeah, well, so. People think you make all kinds of money panhandling. There are days I do. There are days I do all right. But that money goes really fast because it costs a lot to live. You know, especially with a wife, 
you know, three meals a day, you know, um, you splurge sometimes, socks, new clothes, you know, a shower is a really hard thing. Um, but what people don't understand, it's, you know, this is not a job that gives you self-esteem. Yeah, no. They're handling no. hey, people spit at you, call you yeah. names, oh, yeah. pour coffee on you. Yeah, right, right. You, but you have to be ready for that, like, and it gets to the point where you, it doesn't even matter. You, you don't care because you need it so bad, right. you know, and survival comes first. And we as human beings will do anything to survive. Yeah. You know? Now, is, is like when I said anybody, any service providers, any homeless? They try, but I can't, keep, I can't keep a cell phone because it gets stolen. I can't keep a cell phone charged when I do about it. Um, there are people that stop by once in a while and take down my name and my information and say they're going to help. And then I see them again maybe two or three times here and there. Or I see them again and they turn their head and walk the other way and feel uh, shame they didn't help me um, or couldn't help me. I have people that throw me $10, $20 and think that's going to solve everything and next time they're mad at me because I'm on the street because they're turning twenty dollars but I'm at a point where I'm stuck this is what I do um, I've become comfortable with it um, I don't see no other way out like I said I feel like I'm falling and never hitting a bottom or at least hitting a bottom that's false and every time I go to try to climb out that bottom's pulled for me and I fall more if I could reach an absolute solid bottom I might be able to climb out but there is no real bottom because it's always it's always being pulled out from under you. You're always falling further. What's your future like? I'm not sure. That's in God's hands. God's in my hands, you know, because I do choose what I do, you know. But the opportunities that are out there are, are harder when you're homeless and when seen as homeless. And when you have to do this all day just to eat, you know. Um, my story goes a little deeper than that. My wife got pregnant. Um, to uh, a prostitute, she's a prostitute, she got pregnant. Um, at the end of her pregnancy, she started having seizures, so she got diagnosed with brain cancer. So, and she's scared to death of the treatment, because the treatment's like 80% uh, risk of death. It's just, it seems like it can't get worse. It only seems like a soap opera. I've been jumped by the Cubans. <laughs> I've been, I can write a book. I can honestly write a book, you know? I'm a, the only thing I really have to say to anybody is just appreciate family because family is the one thing I don't have that might save me from this. Because when you mess up and you make a mistake, most people got family bail them out. I don't, because it's my wife. So we gotta eat this one ourselves. We gotta find our way out ourselves. And so appreciate family. They're the most important thing. And don't judge because a lot of these people are two missed paychecks and no family away from being right here. You know? And it can happen really quick. It really can. Before you know it, and you're stuck. You know. If you had three wishes, what would they be? It's hard. It's hard. I haven't thought of, of. I haven't wished for anything in so long because I'm just worried about getting what I need. Um. That's a hard one. I, that like, I wish for my wife to be better. I wish I had family. I, I don't know what I do with the third. But I give it away. Thank you very much for talking to me. You're very welcome.